consistency across the board is ultimately going to help your brand. And when you think about the successful brands that are really doing well and really engaging and connecting with their target audience, they are consistent. Every single offering or deliverable that they have is meeting the expectations of their clientele. So when you think about building a brand and remaining consistent, creating SOPs and processes that can ensure every single experience that your clientele has is exactly the same every time. This is Social Pulse Podcast Agency Edition, your go-to guide to solving your biggest marketing agency challenges authentically. I'm your host, Mike Galton, and each episode is an honest and frank look at what agencies go through, from churning clients to tackling tech and ideas that you can apply to your own business. And now, the rest of today's episode. Welcome back to Social Pulse Podcast Agency Edition, where each and every week we're talking to marketing agencies like you, going through many of the same struggles you're going through and sharing their stories. Subscribe to find in each episode inspiration, motivation, and the perspiration that go into growing and scaling agencies like yours. Listen. You frustrated with the roller coaster results of your digital marketing efforts? One month you're soaring, the next you're scrambling to explain the downturn. Achieving consistent results can seem like an elusive goal, compounded by factors outside your control. But is there a science to sustaining steady success in digital marketing? Today, we're unpacking that very puzzle with Junte Delane, a digital marketing strategist and founder of Digital Delane. Junte has engineered a formula for achieving consistent and reliable digital marketing outcomes, harnessing the power of data to maintain a steady trajectory. If you're ready to move from inconsistent results to consistent success, Junte is here to reveal the roadmap. Let's dive into the science behind digital marketing consistency. Hey, Junte, welcome to the show. Hey, Mike, happy to be here. So glad to have you. Let's start with the basics. How okay. do you define consistency when it comes to the context of digital marketing? Wow. Well, that's a great question. I think consistency consistency really revolves around having a steady brand communication, a steady cadence of communication of all of your all of your brand assets and and communication and so on. It also comes with building trust and uh, relatability amongst your your clientele or whoever you're targeting. It, it also focuses on ensuring that every single transaction is the same, of the same quality, of the same impact, and so on. And so this is really all the factors that revolve around having a consistent brand marketing campaign for your client or any organizations that you may represent. I'm so glad you put it that way because... Sometimes when I ask people that, their answer is, well, we post Monday, Wednesday, Friday at 1 p.m. That's their definition of consistency, which is not <laughs> what we're talking about here, right? We're not talking about necessarily posting the same time of day or the same day of the week. That really doesn't have anything to do with being consistent as a brand. Yeah, that's good to have a consistent schedule, maybe. But what's so much more important is everything that you outlined there. So I thank you for sharing that. What would you say inspired you to develop a formula or approach that focuses on achieving consistent results in, in digital marketing? Yeah, I mean, you know, Mike, when you look at all of the popular brands, and so let's say, for example, a lot of fast food restaurants that you know deliver consistent results. You walk in the door, the customer service, the environment is all consistent in what you would expect. When you order your food and 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 get your food, it looks like the pictures on the menu. Consistency across the board is ultimately going to help your brand. And when you think about the successful brands that are really doing well and really engaging and connecting with their target audience, they are consistent. Every single offering or deliverable that they have is meeting the expectations of their clientele. So when you think about you know, building a brand and remaining consistent, creating SOPs and processes that can ensure every single experience that your clientele has is exactly the same every time. Some key points there to help establish a consistent consistent delivery of, of your offering is something that we at Digital Delane really adopted when it comes to managing our clients. And so one, we have an SOP uh, and that SOP is attached to a specific service offering that we, that we have. An example of that be, would be for our social media marketing. How can we create social media campaigns on behalf of our clients that is consistent? 
It has the same level of quality content. It has the same level of engagements, whether it's proactive engagement, engagements or reactive engagements. It has the same level of creative assets that are of high quality across the board. And what we do is we implement that SOP to make sure that we have checks and balances in place to when it, when it comes to identifying the persona and, and getting research on that persona, when it comes to focusing on the where we should engage, whether it's in, on the timeline of, of our client or out in different online communities where our client's target audience resides, there is a formula established and we leverage that formula for every single client to remain consistent across the board. I love that you started this with an analogy to fast food, because I think there's another element uh, to that that's true, which is that if you walk into a fast food restaurant, and this happened to me relatively recently, and the food isn't what you're used to, if it's inconsistent with your past experiences and expectations, you pick up on that instantly. You notice right away if the fries are cold or you know the, the, the burger's missing the cheese or whatever it is that you were expecting to, to receive. And it's something I think, and, and I want to know if you agree with me, you don't think about that when the consistency is there. If you go mm -hmm. in, you place your order, you get what you expected, you don't think about it. You just go on to eat your food or do whatever it is that you were expecting to do. It's when it's messed up that it's suddenly really a stark difference in your past experiences. And I feel like that's the same thing with brands and their marketing. When they're inconsistent, it's noticeable. When it's consistent, it's only noticeable to people like you and I who are paying attention to the marketing. The consumers probably don't don't care. Would you agree with that? I, I, I would agree with it. I think when you are looking to focus on when your target audience believes that the, the service that they are that they have is inconsistent, you want to establish that feedback loop, right? And gathering audience insights is of course key in that process. So as you continue to service a client and you continue to look at at how the audience is engaging with your offering or your services, creating that feedback loop with audience insight is certainly key because it's going to allow you to update and optimize as you go along to make sure that it is consistent across the board. So those are some key advice, uh, piece of information and best practices that I would give any agency owner who's looking to remain consistent in the space. Yeah. And that's, that's one of the challenges that, you know, you, yeah. that consistency isn't going to necessarily be noticed. Like we said, you're not going to get a metric on it, but can you share some of the data points or metrics that you would focus on to ensure consistency in, in all of your campaigns? Yeah, I think one looking at the engagement rates, right? So when you see, for example, how people are engaging with your content, you can set a benchmark across the board for the type of content that really resonates with the target audience. Uh, I think also conversion rates is another thing. You may have content that gets a lot of views, but ultimately you're at the end of the day, you're looking to move the needle for your client and conversion rates is really what, what keeps the, the, the job security there, right? And so when you look at content and the engagement rates and conversion rates, those are some key, key metrics that I think would be helpful. You can also look at brand sentiment as well, right? Analyzing the tone and sentiment of user feedback that again goes into that, that feedback loop that we talked about earlier as a KPI, that would be, that'd be great for any type of campaign. Totally agree with that. And one of the things I mentioned at the outset was that sometimes there's external factors uh, that can impact the consistency that we're able to deliver, whether it's the campaigns themselves or the, ex the uh, results of those campaigns. How do you handle those kinds of variables and those kinds of external factors that, that may be outside of your control, but they're still going to impact your results. You know, I think it's, we, we don't know which direction, which trend is going to pop up. We can have an idea, right? Based upon the research that we've done, our experience in that specific vertical, but ultimately we want to make sure that we keep our thumb on the pulse of what actually is going on with the target audience of your client. And one, one way to do that is through real-time monitoring, right? And you want to make sure that you focus on real-time monitoring to track the performance and trends to be sure that you're able to adjust for any updates or hiccups or any friction or external factors that could in ultimately impact the campaign. So that would certainly be helpful there. I think you also have to 
have a backup plan, right? Some type of contingency plan to focus on if the unexpected happens, what are we going to do, right? What are we going to do? And, and if we have forethought and be able to implement a protocol to leverage just in case things go awry, then that'll uh, uh, push the bar uh, closer to, to uh, being s- something that's, that's more consistent with when you're looking at your, your metrics or your analytics. I think also looking at the data, of course, right? To identify if there's any specific patterns that, that you're noticing that could cause some potential disruptions uh, and then use that to, to, to move forward with any of your campaigns. That's, that's great advice. And you mentioned real-time tracking of what's going on, talking about data. So what are the kinds of technology or maybe even automation should we have in place that would help us maintain consistency across all our digital marketing efforts? Yeah, I think obviously having some scheduling tools are going to help you remain consistent to make sure that the content is published consistently across all of the different platforms, making sure that you have analytic software that's involved so that you can look at the insights to adjust some of your your planning in terms of when the best time to send a specific piece of content or when would be a good day or holiday or event and so on. And analytic software would help in that process to truly define how you should schedule content. Also, you want to focus on having some type of customer relationship management system, obviously CRM, so that you can manage the interactions with your target audience so that consistently based upon their behavior or based upon sort of their 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 life cycle uh, with consuming your offering or your client's offering, you can create communications that would meet them where they are, meet them when they're actually going to need that offering and schedule it out beforehand to help remain consistent, remain top of mind, and so on. Great recommendations, great suggestions. Folks, we're talking with Jintata Lane about what it takes to build consistent marketing campaigns and results for your clients. One key to consistent success, of course, is having reports at your disposal to demonstrate that consistency. For that, you need a tool like Agorapulse. I actually can't say enough great things about the reporting with Agora Pulse. I feel like that is my job security every month. My clients aren't that active on social media, which is why they have me manage their profiles for them. And when they get that report, it verifies that they're making a good investment. The metrics uh, downloads are so simple and easy to read, and it really helps me show where we are doing things right on social and where we need to improve. So I think one of the main reasons why we decided to move to Agora Pulse um, is because it's a more comprehensive, integrated tool for all of our marketing needs. So rather than what we have had to do historically with Sprout, which is use certain parts of that feed, that, that platform that work really well and then supplement it with other outside tools, by moving to Agora Pulse, we were able to keep all of that into one, you know, into one technology platform, which is not only a time saver, but it also makes sure that our analytics and all of our reporting's on point because we're pulling all from the same source. It's a really great platform for agencies. It makes it really easy to manage, um, but gives me really, really, really robust information that actually helps me um, develop better strategies for my clients and better plans of action. Awesome. So could you walk us through a campaign maybe where you have used some of these tactics that you're talking about and you've seen some really steady and reliable results? Yeah, I think one successful campaign that we implemented at Digital Delane for a client that was in the e-commerce sector where we essentially implemented a consistent posting schedule to make sure that the brand stayed top of mind for their audience and we can and that we continue to engage a, a high frequency, whether it's proactive engagements or reactive engagements as well. We had periods of time where we would check the analytics and revise any of the ongoing strategy that and posting that may be taking place. And ultimately with this structure, we were able to get an increase in engagement rates, steady rise in the followers, and, and of course, a notable boost in sales conversions as well. Love that. So when you're talking to clients, some of whom might be saying things like, hey, we want to go viral or other kinds of kind of 
bizarre expectations. How do you set realistic expectations while you're still aiming for consistent performance? It's an interesting topic. And it's something that I teach my team about often is making sure that we establish realistic expectations for all of our clients at Digital Delane. And I think it starts off with me, right? As the founder, I think one of the things that we do earlier on is we make sure that we have a pretty robust onboarding and kickoff process. One of the things that we do with regard to onboarding is one, making sure that when we develop our proposals, it's clear communication and they understand what's in the proposal. During the onboarding process, we have them fill out information about their brand so they can upload all the assets. We focus on giving them information to connect with various profiles, our, our you know, the meta business suite as a partner and, and all the other profiles as well. And then we focus on having them schedule a kickoff call with the agency. Before the kickoff call, they'll receive a series of communications that walk them through exactly what they can expect during the kickoff call, what, what they're responsible for, what they should bring, and so on. During the kickoff call, we focus on going over the overarching strategy of, of what we are planning on doing for them. We also answer any questions that they may have, or we look at their client brief that they completed during the onboarding session to see if there's any holes or any questions that we have or anything that we want to firm, firm up a little bit. And also we make sure that during this kickoff call, we, we have them identify what their goals are. And we identify specific KPIs, whether it's getting more leads, getting more, more conversions, impressions, brand awareness, and so on. And then we also look at our scope. And when we, when we do these two things together, we identify if there's any gaps with regard to their, what they're expecting. So if they're expecting, you know, to get, you know, a million f customers in a month, but they're on a starter package, well, there's, <laughs> there's a gap there, right? Yeah. <laughs> so what we like to do is use that opportunity to either um, uh, upsell or cross-sell, but also leave them with the impression of this is where we are, this is where we're going to start, and we're, we can eventually grow to that point. And so we want to make sure we set realistic expectations by having them identify their goals and checking that against the scope that we're actually contracted for and then move forward from there. So th those are a couple of ways that we really focus on helping the client have realistic expectations about the deliverables that we have. That makes sense. Now, almost every agency owner I talk to is a little bit different. So I'm wondering, are you primarily sales focused personally? Are you like the, the face of the company from that perspective or, or what is it your role? What is your role? Yeah. So now we're, I'm at about 85% autonomy with, with the agency. So I'm taking a, a step away from the sales, even though I do hop in on sales calls for clients that may know my name or may have, have engaged with me outside of the agency. Uh, but ultimately we have all the key players in place as of now. And I come in and just in case there's a larger client, I can help seal the deal. Awesome. Awesome. And then they just had that great onboarding process to, to pass them on to the rest of your team. That's terrific. What about some common pitfalls or mistakes that agencies or clients should work, look out for when they're, they're trying to be consistent with the digital marketing efforts, but these kinds of things are relatively common roadblocks or stumbling blocks that they might run into. Any of those come to mind? I think, I think the common mistakes that many marketers face when executing campaigns is neglecting the audience insights. And pr primarily as marketers, the first thing that we may think about is let's create content and let's showcase um, all the wonderful things that our client offering has. But they really don't, oftentimes they don't pay attention to what the audience wants, in particular for social media. Right. So what we like to do is we like to focus on identifying the key offering for our clients and also what resonates with the target audience and try to infuse that offering into actually what resonates with the target audience. So we start off with what the audience likes first and then try to infuse uh, the client's offering into that instead of uh, doing it the other way around. So that's one thing I think... Um, is, is highly neglected for uh, many marketers across the board. I couldn't agree more. In a previous life, I was a website designer and one of my clients was a cat breeder. 
and mm. she wanted like bouncing gifts of kittens scrolling across her page. And I had to fight with her because I'm like, this is not necessarily what your target audience is looking for. This isn't going to help them make a decision about purchasing a cat. It's just adding noise to right. your website. And, and, and that's not going to help anyone at all. Now, I've got just two more questions for you. And this is the one that I love asking every agency owner because the answers are a little bit different and nuanced and it's really interesting so i'm wondering how do you currently measure the business impact of social media in the context of maintaining consistent outcomes well i, I think that is the question that provides uh, a great deal of clients for us because we do have a formula and have figured that out and we actually use agora pulse to help with that the agora pulse social roi feature is is wonderful and it's, it's working really well for us. Essentially what we do is we make sure that we try to link all social media activities to any type of sales and lead generation. So we make sure that we have all of the Google Analytics data piped into Agora Pulse so that we can see exactly how much traffic is, 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 is being drawn from our social media activities obviously leveraging UTM parameters through unique tracking links and things like that. So we actually can showcase the work that we're doing and how it's contributing to the client's bottom line is something that is, is it's helpful when maintaining consistent outcomes and moving the needle for, for our clients. Love it. Appreciate the shout out. Thank you. That's sure. fantastic. Yeah. Last question, Jinte. I'm just kind of wondering, what are some of the actionable steps that our listeners can take to start achieving steadier results in their digital marketing campaigns? Yeah, I think the actions that people can take when, when providing steady results for clients would be define clear goals. What is the goal of the, the campaign and make sure it's specific and measurable? Creating a content calendar, of course, is key. Making sure that you have all the content planned out and you have all of your resources and efforts created beforehand to create that content and then publish it. Um, also consistent branding as well. Making sure that there's consistency across the board for all the content, whether it's the look, the feel, the filters, the types of images, so on and so forth, remain consistent. And then having a cadence of, of client engagement is, is also very important. Making sure that you're checking in in, specific, in periodic times for sync meetings with clients is, is certainly going to be helpful. And then making sure that you also are analyzing the data beforehand so that you're able to adjust your campaign uh, down the line. So those are some key things that I think would help any marketer to achieve consistent uh, marketing campaigns or the client or any organization that they represent. Love that. Terrific advice. Jinte, this has been fantastic. Thank you so much. Such great information. For those who want to learn more about you, they might want to follow you or connect with you. Where would you send them? Yeah. So you can just Google me. I have a pretty unique name. So just Google Jante Delane. You can also check out our agency website, which is digitaldelane.com. We also are looking for partners. So if you want to partner up, uh, feel free to go ahead into that website and click on partner and uh, and go from there. Thanks, Shante. Thanks, all of you, for listening. Don't forget to find the Social Pulse Podcast Agency Edition on Apple and leave us a review. We'd love to know what you think. Until next time. Thank you for listening to another episode of Social Pulse Podcast Agency Edition, hosted by Mike Alton and powered by Agora Pulse, the number one rated social media management solution, which you can learn more about at agorapulse.com. If you enjoyed this episode, please subscribe on your favorite podcast player and be sure to leave us a review. Your feedback is important to us. You may know you're listening to this show along the Marketing Podcast Network, but did you know there are other great shows on MPN to help your business? Robbie Samuels hosts the On the Schmooze podcast. Robbie, tell listeners what to expect from the show. Since 2015, I've interviewed entrepreneurs who overcame challenges to achieve success in their field or industry. Tune in to On the Schmooze to listen as I ask deep questions to elicit untold stories about leadership and networking. And where can people subscribe? Find the show at ontheschmooze.com or on marketingpodcast.net or just search for it wherever you get your podcasts. You heard them. Go subscribe. This podcast is heard along the Marketing Podcast Network. For more great marketing podcasts, visit marketingpodcasts.net.